Well, good morning, everybody. Um, running a minute or two behind. I'm trying to decide if I like going vertical or horizontal with these videos. So do me a favor, post it in the comments if you prefer this way or this way. I, I put these on YouTube and Instagram and it's just like I think every platform has a different preference for how to view them. But we are in John 3 this morning and you know yesterday night after doing John chapter 2 uh, with the kids we went home and watched The Chosen. What a great show. And episode 5 is The Wedding at Cana. And I believe seven or eight, probably seven, I don't remember, but John chapter three, Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus is one of those episodes, and it is very, very good. But in John three, verse one, it says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, who, and we, uh, who, Teacher, come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with them. Now, we see here Nicodemus. He is a ruler of the Jews. And Jesus is later going to say in verse 10, Are you the teacher of Israel? So here we have that definite article again. The teacher of Israel. It doesn't just say a teacher of Israel. He calls Nicodemus the teacher of Israel. And this gives us some clues on who Nicodemus is. He's referred to as a ruler of the Jews in verse 1. We know that Nicodemus is a Pharisee. We know that he is a ruler among the people, and he's referred to as the teacher. Now, he was a contemporary of Gamaliel, who was one of the greatest teachers of all time for the Jews, but he had a specific role of being one of the head teachers over the whole nation. And what's fascinating is that if we piece things together, there's a very good chance that Nicodemus is one known as Nicodemus Ben-Gurion, who would have been the brother of the historian Josephus. If that, in fact, is true, that would mean that Nicodemus was actually the third richest man in all of Israel. And being a ruler and a teacher and all these things, that would make sense. He was from a very large and prominent family. Now, history tells us that, well, we see his conversation with Jesus, and we'll get into that more today and probably have to go into tomorrow because chapter 3 is just so full of good stuff. But we see that I believe he becomes a believer. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea are the ones who took Jesus' body from the cross and they buried it in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. Nicodemus being this rich man, they could have afforded the hundred pounds of spices that they put on his body when he was buried. But history tells us that Nicodemus Ben-Gurion, the brother of Josephus, ended up losing all of his wealth. Now, secular history doesn't tell us why and how. We just know that he lost all of his wealth. If he'd become a Christian, this would have made perfect sense as to why he lost all of his wealth. All of his connections would have been broken. The people who would have supported him would have cut off their support as he joined this rogue group of outcasts known as Christians. Other things that his story shows us, one that I find fascinating and very hopeful for me, is there was an old holiday in the early church and they, they honored Nicodemus of the house of Gamaliel. Tradition has it that Nicodemus moved in with Gamaliel and that's where he finished his life, living in Gamaliel's house, which to me would make me hopeful that even in the book of Acts, where we see Gamaliel, and maybe if you need a reminder too, he was the teacher of Paul. And Gamaliel writes that Paul was his greatest student. And so it's interesting how these things all tie together. But if that's true, then when Gamaliel tells the Sanhedrin to, you know, just let these guys go. If it's of God, then we don't want to try and stop it. And if it's not of God, it'll just end itself. Perhaps Nicodemus had already moved in and had already been witnessing to Gamaliel. And maybe at this point, Gamaliel was a believer in Christ who was maybe keeping his mouth shut so that he could sit on the Sanhedrin and be part of that leadership 
and still have influence and try and help the Christians out. So it'd be awesome to see Gamaliel in heaven. Really hope I do. All that said, that's some interesting background stuff on Nicodemus, if you're curious. And I think The Chosen does a great job of portraying him as a sincere Jew who was a Pharisee, who dressed like a Pharisee, followed the rules of the Pharisees, but deep down he, he wanted to worship God. And they were the ones, you know, at the time who seemingly had it figured out on how to worship God. Once again, it doesn't mean that they didn't have a heart to worship God just because they were a Pharisee. It was just the way they worshiped. And so he comes to Jesus and he's telling Jesus, we know that God has to be with you. And so Jesus says in verse three, those key and critical words, he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hey, look it, my ride just arrived. Aha, sweet. All right, we're gonna go walk over there together. I'm gonna finish it up right here today. So, what we got is one of the most important verses in the Bible where Jesus says, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. You know, God has no grandchildren. Our children don't get just automatically put into heaven. They have to be born again. We have to have that part where death turns into life. We're born physically, but we need to be born spiritually. And Jesus is going to make that really clear. But check it out. You don't need to hear it from me. You should hear it from these guys. Watch this. You guys have got like 20 seconds. Um, John 3, 3, you must be born again. Yep. Go, da go Dallas. So uh, I like how the NASB renders it. It says uh, born from above, if you get down to verse 7. So uh, born from above, man. That's a supernatural experience that... Um, your parents can't bring so you, only the spirit of god born of the spirit born from above and you need it because without it you can't get to heaven jeff just just remember the word says must yeah amen sweet all right i'm off to go hang out with these guys you guys have a great day take care